Does anyone still believe in paradise? She believes that where there is life, there is hope. She's an evangelist, a philanthropist, a singer-songwriter, and a playwright who has been helping individuals regain their self-esteem for years. Here to talk about her domestic violence advocacy, music, and her latest book release, Leaving My Pain, I am so happy to welcome mother of superstar Nicki Minaj, Curl Mirage, to the Gillian Circle. First of all, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, thank you. How are you? I'm doing quite well. I'm, I'm, I'm very excited to sit here to speak with you because um, one of the reasons why we wanted to chat with you is obviously a lot of your work is around domestic violence, right? I'm a survivor of domestic violence, familial domestic violence. My okay. family lived that story. So everything that you wrote in Leaving My Pain, I understand that was very cathartic for you, it speaks directly to my story, and as I know it will uh, to millions of people. So the first thing, before we, we talk about Leaving My Pain, the book itself, I wanna ask you, what was the decision point for you to sit back and put your story out there? What made you decide to tell this story? I realized that um, there were so many people who, who were um, going through abuse and um, I wanted to, to let others know that it doesn't matter your status in life, mm -hmm. that domestic violence is, um, is all over in any, in any household, if, no matter what titles you're holding. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to really get it out there so people could know that I've been through it and I'm standing and they also can do the same. And I think one of the remarkable things is that in the midst of any domestic violence you experience, you also had to wear the hat of being a mother at the same time. That's a story that a lot of women out there are living right now, whether it's a single mother who's just gotten out of it or a person who's currently in it. Um, you've been quoted as saying that Rocky Road, you know, the Rocky Road of life has its purpose, right? Yes. How do you help individuals find that purpose when they have been so deeply scarred by something like domestic violence? Well, first I, I um, speak to them about um, letting go and forgiving. Mm. Um, we cannot go forward unless we release um, our pain and forgive who, whoever hurt us. So um, I speak to them about that. Mm. Uh, they gotta find it within themselves to let go. Once, once they've let go, then they will be able to um, look at their, uh, uh, their individual lives and work on enhancing it, mm -hmm. you know, or on reaching, reaching, certain st the, reaching the stars that they long to. But it, will, it hardly happens with, um, with carrying pain and anger for the abuser. Mm. That, that, on the topic of forgiveness, um, I was one of those people, and I want your, your take on this, I was one of those people that falsely thought that forgiveness meant that I still had to have the person in my life or still had to deal with them. Um, is there a way to, what is the proper way to forgive someone but also still know it's okay? In, in, my, in my world, it was my father, right? I had to get to the point where I could forgive him but I was okay not being connected with him. And I think that's where people get caught up. Do you? Does forgiveness always mean that someone still has to remain in your life or is it okay to extricate yourself? Well, we can forgive someone. Once we truly forgive someone, mm. we can see them walk by and not get angry. Mm. So there's a level we have to reach. Therefore, if we truly forgive and empty ourselves of all the bitterness, the person can live next door if we truly do that, but it's a process. But forgiveness doesn't mean that you have to, um, that you have to keep that person around. Mm. You have your time when, 
as an individual, all that, you know, your, your hurt and your pain will be, you know, will, will, will have no more effect, you know, on, on, on that relationship. But everyone is different, you know, you know, takes a different time to heal, you know, so, but you, you don't have to have someone in your life when you forgive them. You could let them go while you heal. Another mistake I made is, you know, with that, I became, I was friends with one of my, when I was a teenager, I was abused. I was friends with my abuser for eight years until I woke up and realized what was going on. So, so that's why that whole forgiveness thing was important to me. Um, in 2013, Carol started the Carol Mirage Foundation to help further her work for dom domestic violence advocacy. So first, why the foundation? And then secondarily, what is the crux of the foundation? I started the foundation because um, I too am a victim of domestic violence. And I realized that many women were walking in, in my shoes or I've walked in the shoes of these women. I once visited a shelter mm -hmm. and um, after sitting down with these women and hearing their stories and then seeing their tears and their, their pain, I just wanted to, to, I knew I left there knowing I had to do something to help. That mm -hmm. was the, when um, the, the Carol Mirage Foundation was birthed. Wow, and, and what I do love is your, your work goes far beyond just women. It's also the effects of what families experience. So, you know, that takes me to your experience with the YES program. Talk to me about what you know, the effect of domestic violence, what it can have on the family as a whole. Of course. Um, when a child sees abuse in, in, the, in the home, it affects them. Sometimes they grow up to abuse themselves, or sometimes they're just a girl, or someone may just fall for the same type of person their, mom, their mother um, fell for. Because um, they grew up in it and they think it's, um, it's a natural thing. Mm -hmm. it has, so that's the effect it has on the children. They can either go according to what they lived. Yeah, generational, the generational pass down, yeah. Yeah, because so, that's what they know. Mm -hmm. And so the YES program is for, um, especially the youth expressions, you know, because a lot of times, young people sit around and they want to commit suicide or they kind of share their pain. The youth expressions really bring out help and I believe save lives. As young people gather to, um, to just express themselves and to just hear, to just have their voice be heard. It saves, um, this, uh, this is a program that possibly save lives. Right. And I know that one of the things that saved your life in the midst of, what, of your adversity was the fact that you, know, you had a love and passion for being a mother. And you're quoted as saying that that sustained you uh, through that adversity, so to speak. How? Well, um, because I had my, my two kids, I, um, I was able to have a, a cause to hold on. Mm. That's, and and that yeah. was and that was my hope. My hope, uh, my hope was my children, and um, they were my reason for going on and and getting out of that. Wow. So with that being said, you you you're in a situation where you've seen your daughter now become a mother, right? Yes. And you are a grandmother. Yes. <laughs> a papa bear. <laughs> a papa bear. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So how is grandmotherhood? It's great, um, you know, this is my third. This is, uh, I have three grandchildren mm -hmm. prior to. So it's um, the same, it's just that um, it's, it's different because there's a different baby mm. and there's a, a, a big gap there it's a, you know, since, I, my, since my last grandchild. But um, I'm very excited because I'm, um, you know, the, new, the newness of life is, a new, is something new for me. Well, but it's not really new, but it's, New and, and Papa Bear. Yeah, I think that's fantastic. Well, Carol, some of the disturbing statistics when it comes to domestic violence jump out at me. Uh, and some of those facts are that, you know, uh, 
it's quote it's it's stated that 20 people per minute experience domestic violence in this country which equates to about 10 million men and women annually one in four women experience severe violence or sexual domestic issues one in seven women are injured by an intimate partner and one in ten women are even raped by an intimate partner so the work that you are doing it, it speaks directly to that how hearing those sort of statistics where does that leave you emotionally it floored me and made me want to get deeper involved where does that leave you that's exactly what's happening what happened to me mm. um, is something um, as serious as a heart attack they say mm. yes it's, we cannot even um, we may not be able to save everyone but we must continue in our pursuit to um, eradicate or um, as much as we can domestic violence we must teach we must educate ourselves because um, it's it's an epidemic to me yeah it definitely is an epidemic and it's unfortunate that it's it's uh, something that's that's grown completely I think you know switching to a, 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 slight, a slightly more positive piece of it I think coming through all of those years of adversity and still being able to wake up and have faith, your faith is really big to you, right? Yes, it is. What part did your faith play in getting you through the adversity you experienced? I think people really need to know that. Well, um, I couldn't do it without um, the Lord in my life. Mm -hmm. I, whenever I was down and, um, or, or dismayed, I will turn to the Word. The scriptures, um, the scriptures did it for me. Uh, it was a measure, measure of counseling, mm -hmm. but um, in my lonely time, in my time away from counselors, it was the when Lord. You, when it's just Carol. When it's just Carol, it's yeah. the Lord. I read my scriptures, I strengthened myself. I started believing that I was much more because God called me for greatness. And um, I just drowned myself in the, in the wood. And I kept my feet, I kept my feet up, knowing that there, there will be an end to um, such suffering and, and pain. And it would not be in death, it will be while we are here on earth. I love that. I love that because it's one of the things I, I say to myself sometimes is I'm going to experience milk and honey here. <laughs> I just want to go to the other side and experience it. Absolutely. You know, you want to experience it here. And that faith was so vibrant. I think any child deserves to feel the sense of belonging, that they belong to someone. Or more importantly, a child deserves to feel like someone believes in them. Your faith was so strong that you knew hands down the possibilities that would exist for your daughter. And, and I bring that up because you're quoted as saying that God was going to complete it um, at a point when she was, hope, when she was hopeful for uh, going to the next level in her, in her artistry. Um, how important do you think, in the midst of those sorts of adversities, how important do you think uh, a parent believing in someone is critical to bringing to a child to the next level? It's very important. Um, children have so many talents and dreams, mm. but it's dependent on the, um, the support, the growth, and the, that talent coming, coming to reality is dependent on their support, the mm. parental support and the support of people around them. I believe many children um, stop dreaming or dreams died because mm. the parent did not encourage or show love or understanding um, towards what they were dreaming about. Mm. Sometimes they, if, they put, if they put down what a child wants to develop, um, the child can just become stagnant and give up. So yeah. It's very important, the support is very important. 
Yeah, and, and with that comes to me the idea of, like I said, a lot of your work, you spend time helping others regain their self-esteem if they've lost it, or more importantly, if they never had it, to get that self-esteem. But, but I, in, 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 if I may be so bold, I would say that you know, your children were your first attack at that, of you know, making sure that they had sustained self-esteem despite the turbulence that was around you guys. Is that fair to say? Or? Fair to say, it's fair to say. Um, my children never see me crumble. And I've had quite a few adversities in my life. Yes. And um, they cannot one time say they saw their mother crumbled and said, I can't. I've never used, I can't. I always say, it's going to work that, Can you say that again? I have never used, I have never I can't. used, I can't. Wow. wow. When my children were growing up, they, they never heard, I can't. And um, they have seen much, many, many adversities. We have a lot, we went through a lot. But because of what they saw in me, they, can, they could not move on in their lives differently. They must stand up to adversities. There's always a, the light at the end of the tunnel. The glass is always half full to me. Mm -hmm. And I don't care who come up against me because I know one with the Lord is a majority. Yeah. I keep standing and I keep going. And synonymous with that is something else you said is that no matter how long the night, finish that phrase for me, no matter how long the night might be. The joy will come in the morning. Yes, absolutely. And you've also gone to music. Uh, I have a question about the music, but, but I, I, one thing I found intriguing is that you were writing plays uh, with plays being in, in you know, New York uh, churches and on stages you know, uh, far before you know, your daughter jumped into Hollywood with her acting in some of them. So when did you discover that you had the ability to write stories? And, and was that a coping skill for you? Um. When I joined the church, uh, when I came to America and I joined the church, mm -hmm. um, I was very interested in the young, in the youth, you know, yes. what, like what they're doing, and you know, they, we always had um, youth groups, we call it, and they always have something performing, you know, in the churches, a concert or something. But um, writing was always <laughs> that was just a writer, mm. and I just it just developed more as I came to America because I wrote the first play that in church that Nikki acted in. Mm. It was It Is Well With My Soul. Yes. And um, she acted in that, where um, her brother was in the army and they were waiting for him to come home. And the plane went down. Mm. But nevertheless, he did not get on the plane they were expecting. So while they were crying and sad in the, um, in the house and moping, the door knocked and he walked in. Wow. So I called it, It Is Well With My Soul. And um, she was above 13 and she acted in that. And then I did My Sister's Keeper, um, showing that it um, doesn't matter what a person goes through um, in the church, you know, we must pay attention to, to them and help wherever we can. Mm -hmm. This was, was a young lady who was so burdened with every thing that was happening around her, she walked away from the, um, from the church. And we had to go to the house and encourage and pray. Mm. So that was my sister's keeper I wrote. And um, so I was always, um, you know, you ask me when did I, it just was flowing. I just, it was just something spiritual. It, writing was, it's just in me. So it was inherent, but it was, it, it, it was some, it's something you always did or did you find it to be a coping skill? No, I always did. I was wow. always writing a short story here and there from since I was in school. Wow, that's excellent. And so then to your music, as I, as I prefaced earlier, um, whether we're talking about tracks like What Makes You or I Am Free or Endless, right? What is the story behind I Am Free? I Am Free, um, someone is in church and something happened. At, the spirit she's touched, you know, um, and she is speaking about uh, an experience that um, 
you know, she, she's speaking about this experience, spiritual experience that um, she's, uh, you know, it's like something she never experienced before. Mm. A new something happened, a new dimension happened for this woman. And what? it's so deep, and, and that's, that's the crux of the lyrics. What could this be? I can't mm. control the surge of joy that Fill, floods my soul. Uh, floods my soul. Yes. It's like he's, you know, I can only say that people who don't, who don't know the Lord, you know, and one day they, 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 they're in church singing and clapping, but there's one time when they put a little something more in it. And that's how the spirit connects because you put yeah, like a some, little something, something, past me. Who, who something was that? happened. <laughs> yes, yes, what yes. could it be? I, I can't explain mm. the surge of joy that floods my soul. Mm. Heavenly singing, angels wooing, I knew my Lord had set me free. Yes. So it's like just so that's what happened. It's not that I didn't see that. That's something that came. That's just uh, um, I just wrote that. Wow. Does it piggyback off of your own spiritual experience, though? The first time you experienced absolutely, the Holy Spirit. Absolutely, yeah. it's, it's definitely. You don't, you don't explain it, but it's just a joy. And that joy comes when you understand that you have to let go of it. Whatsoever you're carrying, whatsoever you're using self to do, to, to achieve, mm. is a joy comes to you. Like the Holy Spirit is telling you, I am going to take you through this. And so that's just a joy, a joy to know that he, got, he has your back. Yeah. And you're not going to, yes. you don't have to push that hard. He's going gonna, gonna to be, gonna be taken care of. Yeah. So what could this be? But, you know, I, when I first felt that feeling, I knew that, um, yeah, you can say I was exper that's my experience, you know. One day you just grow to s something that you don't even understand. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, I think poetically you say, you know, in a baby's laugh and a mother's cry, there are miracles all around us every day of our lives. And that's how we know God's alive when we feel his joy. I think that's great. Now, earlier I preambled uh, leaving my pain. And I, I want to, uh, to close um, coming back to that again, because uh, again, that's, that, that speaks to the heart of who you are and being able to touch lives. So leaving my pain, obviously not giving away too, uh, too much, but theoretically, I know that there can be three top theoretical points that if you had five seconds to tell a person to get out of something, get over something, or let go of something, what are those three things that leaving my pain would offer? Leaving my pain, um, it's gonna give, it's going to give you a peace. Mm -hmm. It's going to give you, help you to understand that someone else ha has gone through exactly what you are going through or worse. Because the stories there, um, are the, they were purposely placed there out of many of my experiences to assist others mm -hmm. and to bring others out of it. So. Um, so it's going to give you peace. Yes, peace. It's going to give you um, strength to go on. And it's going to give you um, a feeling of um, a, un a, an understanding that you are not alone. Wow. Wow. Peace, strength, and knowing that you are not alone. Um, we know that during the uh, global pandemic that domestic violence rates have increased astronomically with people being stuck at home with one another. And so with that being said, I know that your heart has increased even more during this pandemic. Yes, it is. Yes. So know that abuse and domestic violence is never okay. If you or someone you know is suffering with domestic violence and wants to get help, please call 1-800-799-SAFE. That's one 800 799-7233, where someone is standing by to help you. Carol, how can we get involved with your nonprofit? The Carol Mirage Foundation. Yes. That, CarolMiragefoundation.com. Um, or have a, a phone number, 516-670-6764. All right, well, sounds good. Well, I, I personally look uh, forward to getting involved. Like I said, we 
we could talk for hours about some of the things that I've that uh, I've gone through and how there are absolute parallels in my family to what you've experienced. You've spoken directly to me, and I know you have for the hearts of the Gillian Circle audience. So again, I want to thank you for being so bold, so brave, so honest, and so open with me today. God bless you, Carol. God bless you, and, th and you're, you're most welcome. Thank you. I'm Mario Bonds, everybody. See you next time. Does anyone still believe in pain?